The Stolen Generation, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians, elders past and present, of the Wadi Wadi people and the Darul land on which Shell Cove is situated and where I live and work. The following presentation will focus on the racial ideology of 19th century Australian government and the policies that were in place throughout this time that led to the taking away of Aboriginal children from their families. Please be advised that this presentation may contain images of deceased Aboriginal people. I would also like to offer my sincerest apologies for the language used throughout this presentation when referring to Aboriginal people. The author has maintained the terminology used throughout government policies when discussing Aboriginal people. The removal of Aboriginal children from their families dates back to the 1840s. However, it did not become government policy until the 1930s when the assimilation policy was passed by government allowing the forced removal of half-caste Aboriginal children from their families under the premise that they were in danger of abuse and neglect. The underlying purpose behind the removal of half-caste children was to breed out the colour and effectively wipe out the Aboriginal population. In 50 years we should forget that there were any Aborigines in this country. A.O. Neville, the Western Australian Chief Aboriginal Protector. The government at the time viewed Aboriginal people as wild and untamable, and the only way to ensure the prosperity of the educated white community was to eradicate the native Indigenous people. Nobody who knows about these groups can deny that their members are socially and culturally deprived. We must improve their lot so they can take their place economically and socially in the general community cited from the 1937 Conference of National and State Aboriginal Affairs. Aboriginal children were put up for adoption to white families, citing they had been abandoned by their parents and they were in need of a good white home to prevent them from becoming outcasts. Many of these children did not know of their Aboriginal heritage and were raised to be white. By the time they learnt of their family history, it was often too late to trace family members as they had already passed away. The short clip from Australian Screen highlights the government propaganda used to sell the assimilation policy to white Australia in the 1930s. For a full version of this video, please visit Australian Screen website. <laughs> This luxurious Melbourne home is a fairy tale come true for three Aboriginal girls from Melville Island, 180 miles from Darwin. Mr. and Mrs. Deutscher visited the island last year and adopted three Aborigines to bring up with their own three children. Christine is four, and for the first time in her life, she has a mother and father. Two-year-old Faye was rescued by a territory policeman who found her abandoned. They've been cared for by the Methodist mission, and now they live in a 15-room mansion. Mr. Deutscher says he believes it's possible to integrate Aboriginals into white families. Christine certainly seems to be proving that Mr. Deutscher is right, and so does Faye. It's all so new to them, and they're still a little wide-eyed. A long way from Melville Island, but at last a home and the love and affection of a family of their own. Sleep tight, children, because you know that dreams do come true, don't you? All throughout the government policies relating to Aboriginal people was a common theme that the measures being taken by the government was in the best interests of the Aboriginal people to protect them from themselves and to help them become a part of the white Australian community. In the eyes of the law, these policies justified the taking of Aboriginal children from their families and placing them up for adoption to white Australian families to help them have a better life. Sir so Ronald Wilson, the President of the Human Rights Commission, states that the removal of children from their communities with a view to extinguish their culture is an act of genocide and the Australian Assimilation Policy advocated this practice for over half a century. Aboriginal children were still being removed from their families up until the 1970s. Teaching students about the stolen generation is a very sensitive topic and requires careful planning and research prior to discussing the topic in the classroom. It is imperative that as a teacher you have developed a trusting and caring relationship with your students and you are aware of their family background and history. You may find that some of your students have a direct experience with the stolen generation and it is necessary to check with the student and their family if they have any issues they wish to address prior to the topic being discussed in the classroom. Where possible, arrange a meeting with the local Aboriginal community and invite them into the classroom to assist with the delivery of the topic to your students. You need to be aware of the language and actions you use when delivering information to students and ensure that you approach this topic with sensitivity and understanding from an Aboriginal perspective. 
This topic requires much discussion and relating of stories. Provide ample opportunity for students to listen and discuss the experiences of the Aboriginal people from the stolen generations in the context that they are accustomed to. The Rabbits by John Marsden and Sean Tan powerfully illustrates the invasion of the colonists and the subsequent taking of land, culture and children from the Aboriginal people. Simon Forrest compared the invasion of European settlers to aliens landing in Australia today and taking away all human rights. The author would like to extend on this comparison and have students compare the motion picture avatar with the book The Rabbits and allow students to draw comparisons between how the native indigenous people were treated in both examples and how the native Aboriginals of Australia were treated throughout Australian history. This activity can be used in class to address a number of cross-curriculum outcomes for English, the arts and history and is suitable for stage 3, years 5 and 6. Students will view the movie Avatar and discuss what occurred to the native indigenous people when humans landed on their planet. Students will then read The Rabbits as a whole class activity, allowing time for viewing of each picture and ask students to keep a mental note of what they see on each page. At the conclusion of reading the story, conduct further discussions with your students as to what they understood the story to be about. Record their responses on the board. Can they draw a comparison to the story of Avatar? Students will then be broken up into groups to discuss the book and movie in further details. Ask the students to respond to the following questions. What can you see in the picture and the movies? How did the picture and movie make you feel? Can you show the link between the movie, the text, the illustrations and symbols used to represent meaning? Students will be able to use a Venn diagram to show the comparisons between the movie, the text and Australian Aboriginal history. Their findings can be presented as a speech, a digital story or a role playing. After the groups have presented their findings, discuss with them how their perception of Australian history has changed. You can display and record their findings for parents and community members to view. This lesson has been adapted from the Australian Curriculum Lessons 2013. The Rabbit Proof Fence. In this unit of work, students will read the book, Follow the Rabbit Proof Fence by Doris Pilkington as a whole class investigation. Students are encouraged throughout the reading to reflect on the characters in the story, how they would feel if they were taken away from their family, how would their parents feel if they never had the chance to see their children again. Students are to record their thoughts in their writing journals. After reading the book, students will watch the movie Rabbit Proof Fence to help them understand the journey taken by the three Aboriginal girls in their attempt to return home to their families. As a whole class activity, organise gifts for your student wrapped with their names on it and display at the front of the class at the beginning of the lesson. Conduct a normal weekly lesson allowing students to view the items with their names on them. At the end of the lesson, cover the gifts over with a cloth and advise that you have decided that you're not going to give the gifts out. Ask the students how they would feel about this decision and record it in their journals. Ask the class to share their feelings after they were told they would not be receiving a gift. Explain to the students that the gifts were never theirs to have in the first place. Have students reflect on their feelings when these items were taken from them and then ask them to consider what it must have felt like for an Aboriginal mother to have her child taken from her. Students can represent their feelings through poetry, letter, songs, painting or story. Students will develop an understanding of Australian democracy and citizenship, including the status and rights of Aboriginal people, men, women and children. This lesson has been adapted from the Australian Curriculum Lessons, The Stolen Generation.